Well, hey everyone, and welcome to our physics homework tutorial. Uh, we hope you find this tutorial helpful in your study of physics, and if you do, please visit our website at www.physicsvodcast.com. There you're going to find over 200 physics examples in every topic of physics. Uh, it's sure to help you get through that physics homework. We'll see you then! Well, hello everyone. Uh, here's your Sioux Falls physics teachers looking at another example of an Atwood machine. This one on an incline. So we are going to have quite a few steps, but it follows the basic principles of our other Atwood machine situations where we need to write an equation for each object, summarizing the net force on the object, and then solve for our acceleration and tension. Now the first thing we want to do is actually draw our free body diagram. And we're going to begin with the easiest example, and that is the object that is hanging directly down. Uh, now notice one thing that's a little bit simple about this problem is that both masses are one kilogram. So in this particular case, if we draw a free body diagram for that, uh, multiplying times gravity, the weight of this object, and we'll make this object 2, is going to be 9.8 newtons. Now again, we have tension going upwards. Uh, that's provided by the cable. But this particular object is falling in the downwards direction. So its acceleration would be down also. And that gives us a hint about tension. If the overall object needs to be falling and accelerating in the downwards direction, then we need to make sure that the weight is larger than that unknown tension amount. Now we should note something here, because on things with an incline, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to tell exactly which way they're going to go. If for some reason the incline was such that the objects actually went the reverse direction. So in other words, if it was steep enough, we might find some situations where this object travels up and this object slides down the ramp. If that is the case, at the end, if we have done our free body diagram incorrectly, we will simply get an acceleration value that's negative. So don't feel like you need to know for sure what direction the acceleration is when you start a problem. If you guess correctly, great, you'll get a positive value for A at the end. But if you happen to guess wrong, you'll get a negative value for A, and then you'll just know that the situation is actually reversed from the way that you had your diagram set up. So let's go ahead and look at that free body diagram. And again, remember, anytime we have an incline, we need to go back to our triangle free body diagram so that we can see the correct components. We do see that the weight would still be the same, 9.8 newtons. And again, that is directly downwards. Now for the two components, one component is going to act down the ramp. That's the one that we're going to be interested in. And one component will be perpendicular. Uh, notice that in this particular case, that component is not really important to us. We also know that the angle of the ramp over here is 30 degrees. And that angle always corresponds to the bottom angle in our triangle. So that is 30 degrees also. So if we are interested in this vector here, this is the component of weight that can act to pull that object down the ramp, that component would be found using the sine of 30 degrees. So just a little bit of extra trig down here. We would have the sine of 30 degrees, because we're dealing with the opposite side. That is equal to opposite 
And again, sometimes we would call that the X component, um, even though it's not just completely in the horizontal direction. It is a component of gravity divided by the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is over here, that's the 9.8 newtons. And so solving then for that component, we find that that component is equal to 4.9 newtons. So the amount of weight that can actually act to pull this object down the ramp, that amount is 4.9 newtons. Now it does also have tension pulling back up over the pulley from the rope. And notice that if we're assuming that this object over here was going down, then we need to assume that this object over here is accelerating up. And if that is the case, then the tension must be greater than the 4.9 component of weight. So notice that's slightly different than just the normal uh, Atwood machine problems that we've been doing so far. We do not compare tension to this 9.8 newtons here because that 9.8 newtons is directed straight down. Instead, we compare tension to the 4.9 because it is that component that is directly opposite the tension. With that in mind, we're now ready to write our equations. Um, we'll start with object number two, that's over here. And again, if we're gonna assume that it's going downwards, then its weight needs to be greater than its tension. And so to describe the net force, we would say 9.8 Newtons minus tension, that would give us the net force. So that's gonna give us the extra that's causing it to accelerate that is equal to mass times acceleration, and in this case, the mass is simply one. And so that's our first equation. For our second equation, the tension, again, pulling up the ramp is larger. So we would say tension minus, now be careful, don't put in the full weight, but again, just put the component of weight that is acting opposite which is 4.9 newtons. That is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And again, its mass is equal to one. Now we're ready to go into the algebra. Uh, this time I'll probably choose to solve this equation for t. t is equal to 1a plus 4.9. Then we can take our other equation here and substitute in for that. Again, remembering that when we subtract t, we need to subtract everything. So this whole thing here all goes in parentheses. That is equal to 1a. And now we can do a little bit of algebra. Notice that this subtraction sign over here then needs to be distributed to the 1a and the 4.9. So we get 9.8 minus 1a minus 4.9 is equal to 1a. Solving that, we get an acceleration of 2.45 meters per second squared. And now we can go back to either of these equations for tension. Uh, we'll probably take the second one here this time. So tension minus 4.9 is equal to one kilogram times our acceleration of 2.45. Solving that for T, we end up with 7.35 Newtons of tension. Do notice that our acceleration turned out to be positive, so that means we guessed correctly, and that this object over here is indeed falling down, this object over here, is indeed being pulled up the ramp in this particular case.